This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to show you how to prove that you own some Bitcoin using signed messages. So what are signed Bitcoin messages? Basically, let's say you own some Bitcoin at a particular Bitcoin address, and they often begin these days with something like BC1. What you do then is you write a message, you use your private keys to sign that message, so you use your private keys that are associated with that particular Bitcoin address, which is a public address. You use your private keys to sign the message and you associate it in that way with that particular Bitcoin address. Now, this can be used, as I said, to prove ownership of the Bitcoin associated with that particular Bitcoin address. It enables you to prove cryptographically that you control that Bitcoin and that you have the private keys need to send or spend it. Now, why might you want to do something like that? Well, I'll give you a very famous example. Let's say that you're claiming to be Satoshi. If you want to claim to be Satoshi, it might be nice to be able to signal and actually prove that you control some of those early Bitcoin addresses where Satoshi mined some of the first Bitcoin. Now, there's this guy named Craig Wright, who we've spoken about before, who claims to be Satoshi and gave the court a list of Bitcoin addresses as part of a lawsuit, these Bitcoin addresses that he purportedly controls as being Satoshi. Here's the exhibit. I'll link to this in the, in the description notes below so you can actually take a look at the Bitcoin addresses that are listed here. But what then happened is once this was leaked or made public, the actual owner of those Bitcoin addresses signed a message uh, using them and associating with them. So this was basically one of the Bitcoin addresses right here. And the message that was signed said, Craig Stephen Wright is a liar and a fraud. He doesn't have the keys used to sign this message. So this was pretty funny, uh, an address that purportedly was, was owned by owned and controlled by Craig Wright, someone else signed a hostile message on it. So this is this is the kind of fun that you can have with Bitcoin signed messages. So I'm going to show you today how to do it using the Trezor hardware wallet, which looks something like this. Basically, I've plugged it into the USB port of my desktop here. I'm going to click Trezor Suite for web up here because I don't want to download their software. And that will take me to this, uh, to my basically my account or the uh, hardware wallets uh, version of my account. So we have the dashboard here, we have accounts. You can see I put about $100 worth of Bitcoin in here. If we click on accounts, we can. this is where we can send and receive. And then again, my private keys stay on the hardware wallet. So that's the nice thing about hardware wallets. But if I go down here on the where the three dots are, and I click here, I can click sign and verify. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick the address that is used here. I'll put this right here and then I'm going to type a message and I did this in advance so I will paste it in here and the message is Ben Bernanke should be in jail just a random message that came to mind now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Trezor hardware wallet which is plugged into this desktop as I said to sign this particular message and associate it with this particular Bitcoin address that I control so I'll go down here I'll click sign and now I'm going to have to actually go to the physical treasure here. It says sign BTC message, confirm address. It has the address. And then it has a green check mark button. I'll press that. And then it's asking me to confirm the message. And the message it has listed on my treasure screen is Ben Bernanke should be in jail. I'll click check mark because I agree with that statement. So now what we have is the treasure has generated a signature associated with this particular Bitcoin address and associated with this particular message. This is the signature down here. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this signature. Now, if I wanted to use my Trezor to verify the message, I would just click right here and click verify message. I'm gonna use an, a, uh, an outside website in order to do this, just so I can show this on a different website. And then we're gonna talk about the privacy implications of doing that. Before I do that though, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button if you're finding this video helpful, if you often watch my channel and have not yet subscribed. So what we're gonna do now, in this step, we signed the message. I've copied the signature. We're gonna to go to this website called verifybitcoinmessage.com. And I don't necessarily recommend you using this. I'm using this just so I don't have to use the Trezor website for both signing and verification. But you could certainly use this if you wanted to verify. You could click verify message here if you wanted to verify someone else's signed message. So I put the message in here, Ben Bernanke should be in jail. Here's the Bitcoin address. And I'm willing to share this 
online because I'm aware of the privacy implications. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do afterwards. So then I'm gonna paste the signature that we just generated, and then I'm gonna ask the website to verify this. And this will cryptographically verify whether this message has in fact been associated with this particular Bitcoin address. So I'll click verify, and down here we can see it says valid signature. Now let's see if we change just one little part of the message. What happens? We'll take away the period after jail, and then we're going to ask this website to verify. And again, it's, it's doing this cryptographically using the Bitcoin address, and I, ca I can't tell you exactly how it's doing it. Maybe some of you know the, the mathematical process for this, but I'll just click verify, and you can see now it says invalid signature. So it really does require that period. At the end, if I click verify again, it's a valid signature. So by doing this, I've publicly demonstrated that I control this particular Bitcoin address, and you were able to see on my screen how much Bitcoin I have in that address and the, the value of it. Now, there are privacy concerns, as I said, with using this, this random. Uh, this just came up in a Google search. It's probably run by good people, but I don't know who runs ver verifybitcoinmessage.com. And so they're probably logging my IP address, which could be used to, to determine my location. They're then associating my IP address with that particular Bitcoin address that I shared. In addition, by doing this, by trusting this, this website to verify the message, I'm trusting that website's node. I'm trusting also, I'm also trusting Trezor's node not to lie to me about the Bitcoin that I have here as well. And I'm also leaking privacy, of course, by sharing that Bitcoin address publicly. Now you can go on a, a blockchain explorer, you can view my Bitcoin being held in that address, but you can't move it obviously, unless you have control of my private key. But if I were to start moving this Bitcoin over, uh, moving it to another address, etc., there might be some, uh, so for example, the one thing I would not wanna do is, is move this Bitcoin into my cold storage address or one of my cold storage addresses, and then you might be able to see uh, how much Bitcoin I own, at least at those addresses. So I'm going to be sweeping the Bitcoin out of this particular Bitcoin address. I'm not going to leave it there for very long. And I'm going to be applying some privacy magic, some forward privacy magic, uh, which I do talk about in my courses, so that no one will be able to track this on chain going forward, because I don't really want to have to, to blur this out online. I'm happy leaving it there and trusting my ability to move it, move it around uh, safely. Bitcoin sign messages are yet another gift from Satoshi because they allow you not to not to have to trust, but also give you the ability to verify these things. And if I wanted to do this the perfect way, I would have used my own node both to sign and to verify those Bitcoin messages that I showed you for maximum privacy and maximum security. That way I wouldn't be leaking my personal information or at least my IP address and my Bitcoin address to this website. And I also, uh, would not be using the Trezor node as well to interact with the Bitcoin blockchain. Because if you're not using your own node to interact with the Bitcoin blockchain, you're using someone else's node. So that's why it's very important to run your own. You can just go to Bitcoin Core, download the software, run it on your laptop. If you want to get into a little bit more depth, I do cover this extensively in my paid course, which I'll put a link to in the description notes below. And you can check out the discount, discount code there as well. Be sure to use the coupon code to get the best price. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.